Remember who you are, bloom where you are, and understand that once you do that, you're blooming for a purpose because other people need you. Other people and the people who will pour into you and the people who will gather around you, the people who will support you. It's not just the heavy winds and the rain and the flooding and all that stuff. There's a gardener. There's a gardener. He planted you well. He knew what was happening. Hey, family, I'm Olivia M. Gonzalez from OMG Brand Story, and you're doing life with Lakeisha on Living Her Truth. Hey, family, welcome to the Living Her Truth podcast, where we have honest conversations about what it means to live a purpose-driven life. I am your host, Lakeisha Woodard from LakeishaWoodard.com, the place where women receive the tools necessary to feel seen, heard, and supported while pursuing their purpose. And now every week, you'll learn those same tools through candid and transparent conversations. Olivia, thank you so much for saying yes to having this conversation with me today. I'm so glad I was invited. I am so honored and happy to be here with you. Ma'am, you're the star of the show here. Like, <laughs> I got OMG on my podcast. They don't even know, but they're, my, my audience, they're about to find out. <laughs> get ready. <laughs> Y'all need to get ready. Get your pen, get your paper. <laughs> That's right. That's I know right. you're about to draw some jams on today. So, Olivia, I will just love to start off every converse, conversation with just telling my, my family, because it's not just my audience, this is my family, about how I come to know the person that, you know, I'm talking to, and this episode is no different. And so, you guys, um, I've had a couple of guests on the show that have derived from this online Facebook group that I'm a part of. I've been talking about it. I heard me talk about it before. And Olivia and I are part of this same the same um, community as well. And it's a really dope community. Mm-hmm. And within this community, Olivia was being interviewed to talk about more of her business, what she does and her story and things like that. And I listened to this interview and I'm like, I need to have her on <laughs> the podcast because even though today's conversation is going to be all about business and entrepreneurship, man, we have a lot of the same beliefs. We are all about purpose. And Olivia really knows how to hone in and really show you and and tell you and give you tips on how to infuse purpose in your your business. So I'm super excited to have this this conversation with you on today. Me too. Super excited. Yes, 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 yes. So, you know, I'm, I'm always talking about operating purpose. And right now going through this pandemic, you know, mm-hmm. the, the, the unrest that's, that's we are experiencing right now, purpose is so key, right? And it's so easy to just drop purpose when the going gets tough, yeah. you know, because purpose, we've already talked about it here on the podcast where we said purpose is not an easy choice. It's a fulfilling choice. That's absolutely right. right. That's so absolutely right. when you have a pandemic, social injustice, you know, uh, and death and sorrow and grief, just build on top of that pile on yeah yeah it makes it even harder and you know olivia i'm a self-awareness coach i'm not a business coach but last month on instagram if you guys are not following me on instagram i'm gonna need you to do that lakeisha Witter. immediately immediately <laughs> and uh, and follow omg too i'll make sure to have our links in the show notes yes but <laughs> Last month, I did a series on bridging the gap between life and entrepreneurship. And I talked about self-awareness and, and how to infuse, you know, purpose into, into both to create harmony, not balance, but harmony. Harmony. Yeah. yeah. Harmony. Because if we, if we seek harmony, I think it releases a little bit of pressure. Um, from us from having to balance and keep everything equal because everything is not going to be equal across the board all the time right and so it's that fluidity it's that fluidity of and it's the the same concept with regard to like core values right in your personal life and in your business life if you are aligned with your core values and your purpose that's grounding you Mm -hmm. it it, it's exactly like you said it's not a balance it's it's not an either or thing you know, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a fluidity that you're able to go in and out of because it's with intention. You teach self-awareness. You have to be intentional with that. Yes. 
You have to be intentional with it. And that's how you stay in alignment with purpose too, because it's so easy to fall out of alignment, especially right now in the economy that, you know, that we're living in right now. Absolutely. And I would love to start the conversation with just talking about, you know, how you got into business. Absolutely. So, you know, I was born and raised in the corporate jungle <laughs> for over 20, over 20 years uh, focused. I started in operations and training, uh, but the last 10 plus years were really focused in brand communications and brand development and concentrated heavily in that area and became pretty successful um, as a, a leader in brand communications, uh, a go-to person for brand communications and writing and messaging, brand messaging and positioning. And as I was doing these things, as I was, you know, um, continuously cranking out content campaigns and development and working on different, I was passionate about um, what I was doing, but I felt as if I could be doing more. That is not what I was purposed for. And it started to bother my spirit. It started to bug me that I had set a limitation on myself. And I started to think about all of the, the, the folks who did not have access to the big corporate brand strategies, the big corporate branding messaging, you know, how they build from their purpose, mission, vision, core values. Entrepreneurs didn't have access to that. And that's what I was doing all day long. And I started to feel kind of like the goose that laid the golden egg. I was cranking out them golden eggs for the giants. And knew, knowing darn well that I could be leveraging those techniques for myself and also for my entrepreneurial, you know, friends and people who were in the community who didn't have access to that type of, whether it's training or exposure to how to build the strategies um, when it comes to branding. And I was like, you know what, I, I'm, I'm feeling like that golden goose in that, in that egg. I decided to shatter the cage in the, in the cage, I should say, I started, to, I decided to shatter the cage. And I took everything that I had carried with me and learned and grew over, grew over 20 plus years in corporate um, brand communications operations and took it from the boardroom into the entrepreneurial world. And I started there and initially I really was um, driving operationally, right? Head, headspace, it was operationally driven. Um, I knew the nuts and bolts of how to build the brand communications piece and how to build up a branding. But as I started to get going, I realized I wasn't applying those things necessarily um, to myself at the front end. And uh, that's when I started to, I, I got wind of this wonderful group you, you're talking about and um, went through, through uh, a process with this group and really started to learn um, to transition basically myself from this, I got it, I got it, it's operational. I, I know what I'm doing. I got all the stuff that I'm gonna do for my, my clients. It did really well, you know, freelancing. Uh, but I jokingly like to say I was freelancing free falling because there, <laughs> there wasn't necessarily anything that I was kind of rooted in at the moment um, because I was like, I can do it. I'm, I can do it on my own. I'm independent, I can do it on my own. I, 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 you know, and I know all of the things that I need to do to transition this out. And as my journey progressed, and I started to remember who I was and remember what my purpose truly was. It was a statement that was made at a conference um, in this you know, uh, group that we're talking about where they were talking about uh, what is your version of hell? And the statement was um, the, her version of hell would be coming face to face with the woman that she could have become. And that's, hit me in my core. I was like, I, I don't want to do that. I, I don't want to be that. I, I don't want, I don't want to meet that woman. I want to be that woman. And in order to do that, I have to accept my responsibility, accept my purpose as a responsibility and be intentional with living my purpose. And to your point earlier, this wasn't necessarily about specifically strictly career. It was both a combination between life and career. Do I really want to accept my purpose? And in order to do that, I had to be receptive. And I was living my life protected. And when you protect yourself uh, and you're not receptive, you know, you're okay to give. Oh yeah, I'll give you all the advice in the world. I'll tell you how to build your brand. I'll tell you how to live your purpose. I'll tell you... But when you're not re receptive and, and you're protecting, you are able to go through and fight, you know, that warrior spirit, right? That you go in and you fight and you do all these things or whatever, but what you're doing is you're preventing yourself 
from receiving all of your blessings and receiving your lessons and receiving all of those things. It's like that closed fist approach. You know, they say you have to have, you know, work with an open hand because you've got to be able to offer your gifts and receive your blessings with an open fist, right? Versus a, a, a closed one. And that was my learning. That's my transition, you know, how I started in my business, truly starting in my business. I was, I was running the business. Mm -hmm. It was legit. I find I was, I was doing all the stuff, whatever, but it wasn't until I accepted the recept receptivity as my priority and allowed people to pour into me as much I pour, as I poured into them, that my cup filled up, that I was able, my purpose, it was almost like that buoyancy when you pour water and what I, my purpose was at the bottom of the cup. It was that pebble at the bottom of the cup, right? And you poured the water and the, and the, the you know, and the, and the, it just came floating to the top mm -hmm. uh, be, because I was receptive enough to allow it to do that, right? Um, and so that really better positioned me for understanding, wow, like this is what I was born to do. I have always been a woman of like conviction. I've always been a woman of like, my, I've, I've, I've got gut instinct. I got gut instinct. She got gut instinct. <laughs> and, and that's really rooted in, purpose. It's rooted in what I drive to do. That's the reason why I'm good at what I do is because I'm able, I'm, I'm intuitive in the sense that I'm able to, you know, I identify certain things and work through, through my gut and have the knowledge and the experience behind me, mm -hmm. but I'm intentional with that. I work with intention. And when that hooked up with my purpose, <sighs> it was like, uh, like nothing I had ever experienced before. I had a moment where, you know, um, I met my business but, uh, bestie uh, in, that, in that moment within the group, um, really have flourished um, since, since then. And honestly, it was in last, just actually like a year and a half, but this has been since 2014, because I've been in this for a long time, but wow. it wasn't until just a year and a half ago that I officially started OMG Brand Story, and we are a brand consulting agency built specifically for entrepreneurs, and we are all about unleashing purpose-driven brands. That is all we do. Wow. That is our purpose, is to unleash purpose-driven brands. And so we help people do that by guiding them through the process using corporate strategic communications processes to help build their brand guidelines that primarily start with the founding elements are found in the heart of your brand and guess what that very first thing that we need to find out with your brand is what is your purpose what is your purpose what is your purpose why do you exist you know and you start with that and then we shift and we grow from there and we build the heart of your brand which is your purpose which is why you exist your mission what exactly do you do to serve your clients your vision where do you see your company at its highest level at its pinnacle where do you envision your, your company and how is it contributing to the world? That is a huge thing because most people are like, well, I'm just a, I'm just a little uh, corner uh, boutique shop up the street and I don't, you know, I'm just a small business owner and what have you. My question is, what happens when somebody buys your blouse or buys your candle or buys your perfume or whatever it is that you're doing and they decided to travel somewhere? And they go to, I don't know, let's say they go to France, okay? And they go to France and somebody says, oh my gosh, that is a beautiful, you know, of course, France and fashion, right? And so somebody, somebody who happens to be a big wig over there with, with fashion says, that is an amazing blouse. Where did you get that? And then they explain, well, it was a handmade, hand sewn from a little shop, da, da, da. Get me in. You don't know <laughs> until you start living your purpose. You don't know how far you're going to go. So to be thinking about your vision, that's another big piece. And then we go on and talk about your core values. And mm -hmm. your core values are those things that you're rooted in, that you then grow from. And so that's really how it came to be uh, and what we focus on specifically in OMG Brand Story. And of course, we do the big, you know, any sort of brand communications campaign, any sort of, you know, branding uh, support that we can do for brand consulting for any sort of entrepreneurs, we are open, ready, and able to do so. But we want to make sure that you know your purpose first and foremost, because that is the root from which all things grow. And we firmly believe that. That's, 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 how, we, that's how we live at OMG Brand Story. Wow. You guys, so like, I never say this, but stop it right here. 
rewind <laughs> it and listen to all that all over again because Olivia drops so many different gems that you can actually use in your personal life. You guys, I know we're talking about business right now, but these are principles that you should be, you know, incorporating in your life in general. So again, if you are not into entrepreneurship, you're not trying to start a business or whatever, still take this conversation seriously and, and figure out how you can use the same information to create that purpose in your career. Mm -hmm. I mean, Olivia, oh my God, you said, you said so much and I absolutely, I absolutely love it. Here um, on a podcast and also, you know, in my coaching business, I'm always talking about building a support team, a support team that's yeah. going to motivate you and encourage you to um, stay in alignment with purpose because that is so key. And you talked about being mm -hmm. Reflective, right? Being receptive, how you needed to receive, even though you mm -hmm. was given, you had to receive as well. And you talked about, you know, the the pouring in the cup. Your your purpose was a pebble, and people once people poured into you, it just brought your purpose out. You guys, that is a beautiful way of explaining what I mean by building a support team. Because it's the people that's pouring into you, you know, because even when you were talking to Olivia, I'm like, mm -hmm, Olivia have that strong woman syndrome where we <laughs> help everybody else. I do. <laughs> we want to help everybody else. And we're not applying what it is that we're telling everybody else. Absolutely. Right? To apply it, you know, for ourselves as well. Because you said you, you working in this corporation and you know what to do because you telling them how to do it. And you realize, you know, I'm not even doing this for myself. I'm right. not been like sharing this information with other entrepreneurs because they don't have the access you guys this is a perfect um, example of what i mean by we're all interconnected our purpose what I mean, operating purpose is not about self it's about the people that we are to impact mm, you people know? we serve it's the people that we don't need it's, it's the it's the people that are waiting on us to wake up and step out of fear and step into our greatness. Mm -hmm. And then when we're at that point, and that's why I was, when I talk about that vision and talk about how far you go, and you're right. And it is a personal journey for me because you're right. I definitely have strong woman <laughs> syndrome for sure. But that, that goes in, in play in a lot of things. How many, how many of us, whether it's as mothers or aunties or teachers, especially now, this, that we pour, 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 pour into everybody else. But whenever it's time for somebody wants, no, thank you. I got it. No worries. It's okay. I'm fine. It's all right. I'm fine. You know, that's that protective state. That's that protective state where you go, 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 but you're not able to receive anything. That for me, I had no idea how powerful community would be for me. No idea. I am a lifelong lone wolf. Chica, lone wolf. I got it. No warrior spirit. I got this. You know, bring it to me. I, you know, I, I got it. I'll take, I'll take it down. As a woman of color, that's that's what we had to do. That's what we had. You have to. You have to. And that, in 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 the essence, it's honestly culturally speaking, it's expected. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's ex it's expected that you suck it up and you know get with it and do whatever you need to do to get it done, make it work, make it happen. Because on top of that, you have to earn it. Yeah, you have to earn, you know, I, and I, I am so, you know, the, the, this whole, uh, you know, the idea of the awakening, I was, um, we were just talking recently with a friend of mine, how, you know, those things, those, 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 whether it's systemic, cultural, whatever those things are that live within us, that we were, you know, um, taught or experienced or were told that we, you know, that was the path. Route. It's almost like um, walking down these, the, uh, these shoots sleepwalking, you know, we're walking down the, sh the shoot sleepwalking and you, you're, you, you are sleepwalking. So you look like you're awake. You understand, but there is something that you need to wake up and understand. This is, this is not the path you have to go down. These are not the things you have to do. Um, and if you, if you don't mind, I, I want to share a little something that I've been, you know, thinking about a lot uh, lately with regard to, you know, okay. purpose and living in, and it aligns with this too. Um, and I'm, I'm writing a lot about this. So the idea of the fact that we forget who we are in the process and we allow these other things to tell us we need whatever it is, we need to be strong. 
We can't ask for help. We need to earn something. We can't, you know, we got to suck it up and not me, you know, and like you said, this applies across the board. Yes, this is an entrepreneurial per perspective because of what, what I do, but this is also life perspective. I live my purpose as a woman, as a Latina, as a business owner, as an independent individual, as a woman of God, as a, a wife, as an auntie. You know, this is, this is, you know, what I live. Well, we forget, we forget at our core what our purpose is. We were all planted, okay? You think of this uh, as like rose bulbs, right? So we, we were all planted um, in the earth as rose bulbs. What tends to happen is after we're planted and we're here on earth, right? Um, and we start to grow, things happen. There are floods, there are droughts. Sometimes the other flowers grow up over you and cover you and, and, and the, you're in the shadows. You don't get as much sunlight as you need to get. Sometimes people uproot you, replant you. Sometimes the lawnmower hits you on the way, you know, in the, in the garden. <laughs> the clippers come through when you're not looking. All sorts of stuff. And by the time you get to the point where you need to fully bloom, where you truly, truly, truly need to bloom, you don't want it. I can't, I don't want to, I don't want to all these things. What if, what, what if I'm like a, I don't know, a Venus flytrap? What if I'm one of those dandelions? What if I'm one of those, you, you forget, you were planted as a rose mm. and you allowed the wind and the, 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 the bearing unbearable sun and the flooding and the unrooting and all that stuff to make you believe that you were not worthy to make you believe that you didn't have to live your purpose, to make you believe that you were incapable of blooming. We must remember who we are. We were born with purpose. We were planted with purpose, planted with purpose to bloom brightly, brightly in the place that we were planted. And you have to remember that bloom, bloom, baby, bloom, because you are a rose. You are an absolute rose. And so when you remember that, when you remember who you are, your core, your purpose, what you're here for, and you are able to identify that, you're able to bloom and realize, you know, your, your fullest, unleashing your fullest potential, unleashing that purpose into the world. Because then what happens? You open up and what happens? There's pollen. That's, you get to, you get to pollinate. You get to, you know, the wind then takes you elsewhere and then people, you know, are bene benefited by your blooming. That's the whole analogy, really and truly. That's the, that's the thing that, that I carry with me all the time is that, think about that. Think about the fact that, remember who you are, bloom where you are and understand that once you do that, you're blooming for a purpose because other people need you. Other people and the people who will pour into you and the people who will gather around you, the people who will support you. It's not just the heavy winds and the rain and the flooding and all that stuff. There's a gardener. There's a gardener. He's yeah. planted you well. He knew what was happening, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and gave you the wherewithal to withstand the circumstances, yeah. you know, and that, that's, that's really, I think, important too. And, and, and I think that both aligns with who you are as an individual. Mm -hmm. And it also aligns with, if you are an entrepreneur and you were, you know, you have that entrepreneurial spirit mm -hmm. and understand that when you do bloom, there's a service or a product or an offer or a support or a lesson or whatever it is that you need to share with the world, mm -hmm. you need to share it. Yeah. Don't, don't be stingy. <laughs> Don't, don't, don't be stingy. He didn't give that to you for you. Mm, yes, that was so, that was so beautiful. And you are absolutely right. I 100% agree with everything you said. And, you know, I, I've shared on this podcast a lot about how I ran for purpose for so long because mm. I knew that my purpose, including me sharing my story of surviving sexual abuse. Mm. And, having to talk about it all the time or, or use it to motivate other women. It's like, I don't want that to define me. Like, I don't want to be the known as the woman who was sexually abused or mm -hmm. the girl that was sexually abused. Right. 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 So right. I, I, you know, and who wouldn't, right. Who wouldn't run from Absolutely. it? Absolutely. But I had to surrender and just say, okay, God, I'm just going to follow you. Yes. And now. Yeah. I talk about it, but that's not what people see though. That's, that's not right. What they see. That's they not see. who you are. Because that's not who. That's not who I am. Who you it's are. A the, it's a part of the journey. It's a part of the story. It was something I needed to go through in order to get me to where I am right now. It was a something to go through so people could, so I could connect. You yes. know, as a as a coach, 
I have to be able to connect with my client. Relatability. Yeah. Relatability. It's that human connection. It's that human element. That's what goes the same thing in branding and entrepreneurship. The core, and I teach this all the time, the one single thread, the one single common thread that every single successful brand has mm -hmm. is the human element. The yeah. ability to relate to the human experience in someone else. If someone can see their story in you, that builds trust and it builds confidence in who you are. And then you build that relationship so that you can, whether it is you then pouring into them based on your journey and your experience or them receiving mm -hmm. the fact that they're, they are not their circumstances. Yes, absolutely. And you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I, I normally don't do this, but I'm going to take a moment because I want to grab something because, you know, it's funny how you, how you talk about being a flower and all the different elements, you know, uh, pulls us away from what purpose is because the, have you ever heard of the Japanese lotus flower? The, yeah. Jap the Japanese lotus flower grows in the most muddiest, dirtiest areas and it's yeah. this beautiful flower but i want to show you something hold on one second yeah okay. yeah so you guys who are listening to the podcast this may be a good opportunity or after you finish listening to go over to facebook and search for living her truth right on facebook because the video version of my podcast is over on facebook and it's also on youtube links are in the show notes but um i did a speaking engagement right? When I went into the schools to talk to young women, and these are young girls who are, you know, uh, living in not so, not so great environments, okay? Mm -hmm. Not so great environments. And I use the Japanese lotus flower, and I use this as a demonstration because I really wanted them to get the point that you made, what you just said, I want them to have a visual of it because every leaf represents, you know, something that was, you know, it could be gang violence. It can be, you know, not grown up with their father. Mm -hmm. Each lease represents some type of adversity, right? Yeah. But it doesn't define of who, who it doesn't define them. And yeah. in the middle of all that diversity beautiful. is them. Ah, uh, that it's is beautiful. beautiful. This beautiful flower. And I took it from the, from the Japanese lotus flower because the Japanese lotus flower is a flower that you can find in the swamp, in the middle of muddy, murky waters, you find this beautiful flower yeah. because it has purpose. purpose. And just because there's dirt and mud all around them, it doesn't stop this flower no, from being It doesn't stop this flower from blooming. Mm -hmm. It still bursts through because it has purpose. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what it is you're going through. It yeah. doesn't matter. Your purpose is going to shine through regardless. Shine through. All you have to do is remember. Yes. You just have to remember what, what your purpose is. You remember who you are and who you were born to be and exist and step out of whatever those things are, you know, those leaves, right, that cover up. What, and, and, and it could be anything and everything, right? So it's at home. It's society. It's your career. It could be a horrible boss. It could be a, you know, whatever, you know, and it, it, whatever the case is, it's peeling away those layers to reveal who you truly are and you have to be receptive in order for that to happen too you have to be willing to do the work yeah that's, that's the thing is willing to do the work because there are a lot of people who say i want to live my purpose i want to you know whatever and i and i'll tell you this too when i'm going through we do brand guidelines intensive right and so i work with my clients one-on-one -on -one and we go through their what builds their brand guidelines and the main part of that is the heart of the brand i was telling you we start with the purpose and we go through these things now uh, i must say like eight out of ten Eight out of 10, the clients will come in and they think they want to, they think they need to give me the right answer, mm. like the, the business answer or whatever the deal is, right? When they come in and it's not until after I'm like, okay, stop, 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 stop. Let's go back to this. How are you feeling? And sometimes somebody looks at me like, why, why does that matter? Because it matters because you did something with intention because you were likely feeling something because you were thinking something because something ha happened something happened to you or some circumstance happened where it was a catalyst for you then to start your business, reposition, realign, whatever the deal was. And a lot of times what we find is in our purpose, and I don't know whether you find this as a self-awareness, you know, leader and a, and a coach with your clients too, but a lot of times 
what is holding us back, these barriers um, in entrepreneurship, and similarly, I would imagine in, in life too, I found it personally, whatever, is something we didn't get or something we didn't, you know, uh, something that happened that went wrong or we didn't get or we didn't receive. And we want to pour that back into someone else, mm -hmm. but we don't exactly make the connection that that's why we want to do what we want to do. And that's the root. Your purpose is rooted. Somebody said the other day that some, something like, you know, um, one of, you know uh, your biggest obstacles in life become your ministry. Uh, they become your, you know, the biggest challenges and the biggest obstacles that you've experienced in life sudden, sometimes become your ministry because you want to then from that point pour back into someone else so that they don't experience or go through or what have you the same way that you, that, that you had, had to kind of figure it out. And for me, not having someone, you know, I, I was, I was doing everything. I was the, you know, I'll do this. I got it. Put it on my back. I, I used to say it was like a burro. I was the, the, the donkey going up and down the mountain. Just put it on my back. I'll go up and down, you know, whatever the deal is. And finally I was like, what am I doing? Like the, no one's giving me extra carrots for that. <laughs> you know, no, one, no one's giving me, you know, stuff or offering to put stuff on my back, you know, goodness gracious. What are you doing? You know, go but it's, and it's like, no, you got to do this for yourself. You have to, you know, step up and understand no one, stop, stop waiting for somebody to recognize you. Those are the Hollywood stories that happened, you know, and suddenly I was sitting there, we're drinking water and they discovered me and now I make $10 million. That doesn't happen in real life. I'm sorry to say, you have to do the work mm -hmm. and you have to show up and you have to live your purpose and step out of fear and do what you are meant to do mm -hmm. because otherwise you're, you're, placing those barriers in between yourself and what you're truly placed here to do, mm -hmm. what you're truly meant to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you actually have to do the work and recognize that whole idea of, you know, I was feeling like I, there was that, remember I told, told you I was sitting in, I was, I, I sat in the office for probably in my corporate days, I, I sat in the office pro probably about three or four months longer than I should have. I don't know if you have ever, or anyone who listens to your podcast has ever, you know, um, been irritated by the spirit <laughs> you know when you when you don't do what you're supposed to do and it bugs you bed of hot coals is what it was a bed of hot coals for me and it just I would go into work and I knew I I knew that I shouldn't be sitting at that desk I knew it and it's that's because my purpose was hello you already said that you've been thinking about these entrepreneurs that you need to help and go out and help them live their purpose what are you doing sitting here Mm -hmm. You're not helping anybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That realization, that, mm -hmm. that thing that bothered me or whatever, listen to it. Yeah. If you, if you have it, if it bugs you, if you, whatever, there's a reason. There's a reason. There's a reason. But how do we make that paper dough? Cause right now we are in the middle of a pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. And a recession. Let's just be real. And a recession. Yeah. How do we make that pivot? Because somebody right now, like this is confirmation for them. This is, they've already known all of this for somebody, right? Somebody yeah. who listens to us, they've already known this already. And this is another reminder, slap in the face, confirmation or whatever it is. Frying pan in the back of the head is how I like to say it. <laughs> there, you go. there you go, right? And so they're like, okay, Key, okay, Olivia, how? How do I make that pivot? Well, I think first and foremost is looking inward, obviously, to make sure that you understand truly why do you exist, right? And there's there's a, a method, it's kind of funny. This is the second time this has come up. I didn't know it was gonna come up today, but this is so funny. I scribbled this on a piece of paper probably about six months ago, and you can see I'm using it for notes, and it, it's not an official anything, okay? But what this is, I don't know whether you can see it here, but I, I'll, I'll give you, I'll, I'll send you something, so maybe if you wanna put it up or, or add it as a file or what have you, and I'll dry it out. But basically, it's kind of like a Venn diagram, okay, for um, the different spaces of things. When you identify what you love, okay, so that's the, when you try to, you know, figure out your purpose. And, and if we want actionable steps, let's put it that way. If we want actionable steps in order to at least get us aligned to make that pivot or that shift, especially in, the, in, in these times, we have to be smart about what we're doing. We yeah. can't, you know, um, in, in times of uncertainty and chaos, uh, obviously, yes, we're going to be rooted in our, in our purpose, but we also cannot just blindly throw caution to the wind. We have to be strategic in how we approach our, our, our movement. So I, identifying um, what you love, right, and identifying what you're good at, and that could be what, what you're good at. It doesn't necessarily have to be aligned with your, with your career. 
listen, there are people who have been lawyers all their life and they flip the switch and suddenly they're knitting coaches. And they, and you know, cause it's what you love is what your purpose is. You're not restricted to what. But in our Facebook community, we have somebody that's blowing up and all she do is knit. Uh, that's right. I, I believe, I believe about 45,000 people who she supports that knits yeah. right along with her. Yeah, that's all she do is knit, but go ahead. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> so what you're good at and what you love to do, right? Those will help you identify kind of what your passion is. Okay. Those, those two in combination help you do that. Now, then if you look at what you love and then what the world needs, you know, you have to find out what's missing in the world. What can you give back? For me, okay, what I let my, my core values and, and how I, I live, you know, warrior spirit all the way, strong woman syndrome. That just means I have core. I got backbone. <laughs> That's what it means. I got good backbone. And when I am thinking about what I love and who I, you know, who I am and what the world needs, the world needs more backbone, more, not more cowbell, more backbone. <laughs> and it needs to understand those core values, right? And to be living with purpose. So the world needs more purpose, but who is driving the world? Who is, who are the people who are uh, pouring into the world? You think about business owners, you think about community leaders, you think about people who are um, generating um, employment. You think about, you know, things like that in that particular area is where my mind was focused. Um, and so understood, okay, well, I want to, brands need to be more intentional and more responsible with what they're doing in their businesses, which means that some of these people are just, you know, flipping switches and selling stuff and talking about, you know, things that, you know, don't have any substance or purpose in the underbelly. And we need to teach them that, I, you know, we believe, and it's part of my core values, every single person, every single uh, business has a purpose. And our responsibility is to wake that purpose up and put it to work. So the, the world needs to change for the better. That's a responsibility. So we take what you love and what the world needs. Then you identify what your mission is. Because remember, that's what you do. What you do to change the world. How you serve your clients, right? Then this, this is where the pivot comes in. So you take what you're good at. You take what the world needs and identify what you can get paid for. What can you get paid for? What can you, what will people need and we will pay for these things, right? And so when you're talking about what the world needs and what you get paid for, if you kind of find your, the job, whatever it is, the vocation, okay? Then the partnership of what you're good at and what you can pay, pay for, that's maybe the, the profession, maybe the area, the industry that you want to kind of tap into, right? When you put all of those things together and you're aligned with passion, your mission, the industry profession, and then kind of what the, that vocation or what that responsibility you have to pour back into the world is, right at the center, right at the center is your purpose. Right at the center, you'll see that unleashing purpose-driven brands. It's something I love to do. It's something that I'm good. I'm so that core value piece. I'm good at what I do. My brand communications. I'm a, a very strong writer. I'm a very you know strong communications person. I have experience in that area. I can get paid for doing that. I can change the world by helping brands identify their own purpose. You put all those pieces together, and it kind and, and it points you in the right direction. Now you'll have to do you know you have to do the work. Yeah. Yeah. You have to do the work and identify those things. But ultimately, those areas, when you're putting together, that's where anyone and everyone, if you want to pivot, if you want to shift and in these very difficult times, there are people out there, look at all the people in this pandemic who suddenly became seamstresses uh, and tailors to create masks. Look at all the people who um, Etsy blew up because of all the people who were adding these things in the in the And you don't have to be crafty. You don't have to be, you know, um, look at what you and I do, mm-hmm. for example. You know, I work with clients one-on-one and help them identify and wake up the heart of their brand. And we go through these exercises. We work on their key messaging, mm-hmm. all, you know, uh, virtually. Thank- thankfully, this is a vir- the virtually we do this. You work, I'm sure, with your clients one-on-one virtually to help identify purpose and walk them through how to, you know, uh, start that journey and, and pursue that journey and follow through with accountability. Those things, you have to think bigger than your circumstance. You have to think beyond what you're seeing in front of you because that's how you start to think strategically. I like to say, um, 
I use this word all the time, reverse engineering. I like to reverse engineer everything. If I have a goal, if I have a plan, if I have a, you know, whatever the case is, I go to the furthest end and work my way backwards to figure out. So, you know, in your heart, you really do. What have you always longed to do? What have you, what has, has tapped at your heart all your life? What were you dreaming about when you were younger? What did you imagine you could do? And then we allowed whatever, and, and some, some circumstances we can't get out of. Some circumstances are like, look, so-and-so passed away and I had to stay and, and take care of their you know, spouse or their, you know, or their house or their home or whatever. That, those things happen. I don't want, I don't want to, to you know, negate uh, responsibility, right? Mm -hmm. Because, and, and being accountable for your responsibilities because those all matter. And it's important that we're responsible and we're accountable individuals and we work with integrity around these things, right? Mm -hmm. And, not but, and there is a way to continue the thought process while you're going through those things, thinking ahead and reverse engineering on what you need to do at that moment, that pivotal moment where you're going to have to shift and move into. But I would encourage you, remember I talked about, you know, your vision is like the pinnacle at the furthest part of where, where you are. Think about that. Think about where you want to be at your furthest part and kind of work your way backwards step by step. Um, to be able to identify what is it that you're passionate about? What is it that, you know, you're really good at? What is it that the world needs from you that you were gifted with? Because let's be real, we were all gifted with something. It just takes us a little bit to figure out, to dig through the, the stuff to realize, you know, who we are. When you do that work and you are intentional with doing that work, then that is the moment that you are able to identify, wow, okay, I mean, I may not have reached exactly where I need to be, but I know where to start. I know where my first step is going to be. And the second you allow yourself to step out of fear, whatever those barriers are, whatever it is that's holding you back, and step onto the path of greatness, you know, stay strong. Stay on the path mm -hmm. and continue walking down, down that path. And there are resources like you. You're a perfect resource. Yeah, for absolutely. For people to help, you know, identify what that's, what is that starting point? But you have to do the work and understand you're going to actually have to look inward. And sometimes it ain't pretty. It's not. Most times it's not pretty. You know, and when you do the work, it requires vulnerability. Like you mm -hmm. have to allow yourself to be vulnerable because that's, oh my gosh. yeah, there's some things that you need to, you know, acknowledge and recognize so you can move them to the side to know what that thing is that, that you do. Absolutely. Those are really good action steps. Thank you for that. And I really want to just hone in on the fact that you guys, what Olivia just, the, the steps that she just outlined for you, you know, please understand that your business is not your purpose. Mm. Your business is the vehicle that you use yes. to operate in. Oh, I love that. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. Right? It's right? Absolutely. It's, it's the vehicle. And I think a lot of people, um, have that misconception and so if the business fails it's tied to their self-worth it's tied to them believing or thinking that oh well maybe that wasn't my purpose mm -hmm. it's not that it wasn't your purpose it's just maybe it's it's, it's you need to use a different vehicle to operate in your purpose like what, what else can you do right what lesson did you learn what, what lesson, lesson did you learn? yes yes how do we take, that's that's a good point so it's like, how do we take the lessons that we've learned this year and use that to do that pivot, do that shift in our business to make it more successful, whatever success means for us on an individual level. I, that, you know what? And I'm so glad you said that. I am so glad you said that because success means different things to different people. Mm -hmm. And we have to understand that just because society has told us that success means millions of dollars and a fancy home and a this and that or whatever, and being on TV and having a bazillion followers or whatever, that does not mean success. Yeah. You determine what success means for you, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. whatever that is. Whatever. And don't let those outside circumstances or whatever the situation is. And I love how you said the vulnerability piece. Because remember, I was talking about, you know, first I had to become receptive. That means I had to take my armor off. I had to take my armor off. It leaves you what? Vulnerable. 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 And let me tell you, that is not my 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 favorite thing to be. <laughs> that is not my favorite thing That's to be. That's okay. all. At all. But even more so, man, for like a strong Hispanic woman 
to admit or to say, I need help or I want you know, for in me, you know, cult culturally. And like you said, even any person of color, especially a woman, especially a woman to, to, you know, get to that, who, who feels so strong and get to that point. It's tough. Mm -hmm. It is hard, but the, the, you know, the community, community, pardon me, the community that you surround yourself mm -hmm. with, that is so critical, so, so critical, because then it's okay to take off the armor. It's okay to lay down the sword. It's okay to express, I'm tired, I'm exhausted. I haven't found my purpose and I've been searching for years. I need help because I don't understand the direction. My business is not doing so well because I can't make connections. My marriage is not doing well because I can't make connections. My relationship with my boss at my nine to five while I'm trying to do the side hustle and the this and that or whatever, there's a lot of components that kind of come on that you have to be willing and able. I, you know, I will tell you what, and it's still a journey because I'm not saying it's over. Mm -hmm. I'm not on here to say, and I figured it out. No, <laughs> this is, it is an ongoing journey. Um, just the other day I was uh, on a, 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 it was like a virtual conference and there was a fellow brand consultant, like brand expert. And um, I had submitted my stuff and was accepted for this. You know, I got, I got like the online training things that were part of this, you know, program. And her thing was she was uh, able to go live on the, on the virtual for like 20 minutes or what have you. And as she was going, and I didn't think anything of it. I was, I was there ready to go. So, because sometimes it sneaks up on you. Sometimes, sometimes whenever you, and that's a, that's a, that's a warning. And it's also a lesson at the same time I'm about to say, sometimes once you open those doors and you feel uh, comfortable, things will happen. Circumstances will happen that will remind you of some of those vulnerabilities and some of those insecurities and part of the journey that you still need to work on. Okay. <clears throat> and this, me even saying this is part of my journey because I would have never said, I would have never said nothing nowhere, but I, I shared it that day because I realized this is part of relatability. This is part of a lot of people go through this. As she was talking, I was perfectly fine. Everything was great. And then things were coming up on the thing. And I was like, oh, I talk about that with my clients. Yeah, I do that too. And of course it's, you know, it's what the, our businesses are very similar. So the fundamental pieces of how you build you know, brands in a certain way or what have you, um, our core pieces, it's how it's in the, how, never the what it's always in the how. So the, what is, you know, identical, but it's how you deliver and how you, you know, uh, go out and, and live your purpose is how well you do and whatever it is. Cause at anybody and everybody, I can give you a list of things and it doesn't make any difference at all whatsoever. That's the, what it's how I teach you and how I help process. So as she was delivering the, what <laughs> I, something inside of me, you know, I like to say, um, do you ever talk about imposter syndrome? Oh yeah. And, and talk of that thing. So I, I name mine, mine's Roy. Uh, cause you gotta name your, you know how you say you, you gotta name the spirit. You gotta name Roy in order to recognize when Roy starts creeping up on you and to call him out and tell him to get out of here. So I felt Roy. Roy, Roy was like, Oh, she's saying all the stuff you say. Oh, she's talking about all the stuff you talk about with your, you know, clients. Maybe there's not a space for you in the market. Maybe people don't want to hear how you want to do those things. Maybe you would have, and I, it took me, I, it took me like off, I was off guard because I didn't go in there thinking that I didn't go in there like thinking that, Oh, well, I, you know, I don't want to hear this person, but that's not what the thing was. I went in there ready to go. And then it was like, she's saying what you say, she's introducing the same things you did. And then it was like, oh, I had to stop. And I'm like, you hush Roy, you hush Roy. You better shut it down and get out because I know who I am. Yeah. I'm rooted in purpose. I know what I was born to do. And guess what? The same people that are listening, are they not the same people who listen to me? They're not the same people who come to me and have my clients and have, you know, that, that, that bread analogy in our, in our, in our, in our group that just talk about how many, you know, brands of bread are out there. Imagine if a, a, a loaf of bread company was like, I want to start a bread company. Oh, well, there's already, you know, at least 30 different bread brands. I guess I can't open my bread business. Can't do No, that's not what happens at all. They were purposed for a reason. You are purposed for a reason. There's room for you in the market. There's room for you wherever, whether it's entrepreneur or whether it's just as you are, 
clear as room as you are. And that imposter syndrome or that self-doubt or whatever it is that likes to conjure up and bug you and tell you that you can't do certain things, shut it down. Mm -hmm. shut it down you give that thing access to your mind you give that thing access to your heart you give that thing access to your spirit that that's what holds you down that's what becomes the weight around your ankle that's what becomes you know you have to understand once you are rooted in your purpose boy those those uh those link cutters came out quick and cut them off and that was the end of the conversation and i was like i i know who i am i know what i was purposed for and I also know, let's be real, there are how many bazillions of people who are talking about branding? How many bazillions of people who are talking about, you know, you, you as well? How many, how many people teach self-awareness? How many te people teach, you know, whatever it is, but the way you do it, how you do it, your approach, what you were gifted with, your delivery, and the gifts that you offer others, they're unique to you and only you. Mm -hmm. And you have to remember, you know, society has kind of told us that, you know, we're, we say all the time, like in branding stuff, you say, you got to be, uh, step out, don't be doing the sea of sameness. Um, and, I, and I joke with my clients, I say, when you look at the sea of sameness, uh, you're looking at seas and you know how the, those buoys that float out on the water, those big, you know, things or whatever that you see a lot of them, that's the sea of sameness. You're in, you're in, the, you're in the big yacht that's blowing through all the buoys. Just, you know, that, that is, that the name of the yacht is I live my purpose. You know, that, that is kind of, that's how you cut through all of that. Mm -hmm. Because if you step again, step out of greatness, step into your purpose, step, step into, you know, your greatness, step out of fear, I should say, not great. Step out of fear and into your greatness, into your purpose. That's what's going to separate you because then you stepped into your responsibility. Yeah. You yeah. stepped into what you're supposed to own, what you were born to own. Mm, I love that. I absolutely love that. And this is what I help my co my my clients do in self awareness coaching, uh, because that's what it is. It's all about self awareness. It's really understanding who you are and what you can bring to the world. Because even mm -hmm. during my my series of bridging the gap between life and entrepreneurship, I talked about how purpose sets you apart from the competition. Because like you said, it's it's probably twenty other people doing the exact same thing that you're doing. But what's going to set you apart? from the other, from the competition what's going to require your or you know have your customers come back to you and choose you over and over and over again yep. it's you your purpose it's the you. purpose is going to set you apart but you know what olivia that setting apart that's what we get tripped up on because the unresolved trauma the the good and the bad experiences that we have in our life the last thing we want is to be set apart especially mm -hmm. if we have fought all our life to fit in in Yes. The last thing we want to do is be set apart. And so purpose sets us apart and people drop purpose all the time because it's like, no, that's not what I want to do. I don't want to be set apart. I want to be validated. I want to be confirmed. I want to be loved, you know, and not realizing that purpose does validate you. It, it does. And I, and I will say this, purpose does validate you, but there is a difference between the sea of sameness and stepping into your purpose and being in alignment with a community of people who also have stepped into their purpose. Yeah, because there is a huge difference between the sea of sameness that are just sleepwalking down the chutes, you know, just going through whichever direction that the system tells us to go or whichever thing, you know, that, that happens and the group of freedom, the people who are free and have wings that can withstand the greatest winds because they are rooted in purpose. Mm -hmm. They are soaring high. Now you're in a community all these people have, you know, stepped into their purpose. They've, they've set themselves up with wings that are going to help them soar higher than they could have ever imagined beyond any limitations. So you're, you are l literally shifting from a lack of awareness and that sameness and that sleepwalking pattern that, yeah, is a sea of, sea of sameness. Yeah, it's a group of people that you fit in with. Mm -hmm. But when you step out of fear, and into your greatness, and you then are in community with a greater, higher, soaring, unleashed community of purpose-driven people, brands, communities, you know, uh, any, however you want to, uh, friends for that matter, uh, whatever you want to call it, it is a different, it's a different type of community that you've then mm -hmm. attached to, you know? 
And that's important because whatever that fear is of, uh, you got to let go of one. I would say, you know, you got to let, what this? you got to let go of one, one vine to hang on to the next, you know, kind of thing. Otherwise you get, you get stuck hanging on, on, on to both, right? You got to let go. You got to let go and, and with momentum. Cause what happens? How many uh, people have seen, I, I, sometimes I like to watch that uh, American Ninja Warrior oh, show. Yeah where they do all the, the athletes or whatever. And, they, and, and there's a thing, there's an obstacle where they got to swing from side to side or whatever and get the momentum with it. The, with the, and then what happens? What happens when they don't let go? When they have the momentum, they've decided to step out of fear and go and jump and they don't let go. <clears throat> what happens? They lose momentum and they fall in the water. Mm-hmm. And that's what happens with us is I'm going to do it. I'm going to live my purpose. I'm going to you know do whatever. But then they hang on to the group that's been walking down the chute, sleepwalking. And they, they, they check in with them every now and again, instead of, you know, flex their wings and get out there and fly soar uh, up high and actually live their purpose. That's, that's also a challenge yeah. because people will drop out of your life. People, th- things will happen. You will find that you will be challenged with people who may not be at that part of their journey quite yet. And that doesn't mean that they're going to have to be completely left behind or that you're going to have to, you know, whatever the case is, um, but you will have to understand that that part, you have to let go. You have to let go in order to truly soar. You can't soar with, you know, one foot on the ground. You can't, you know? And it's funny, I always talk about like a cliff jumping. I'm, I, I would say I'm, I'm a natural born cliff jumper. And sometimes, sometimes I come up with a little cut over my eye or whatever, but <laughs> I have learned over the years, you know, some people, or we're, we're all kind of type, type of, you know, cliff jumpers more or less, right? And some of us jump freely and, you know, uh, and don't, and don't learn our lesson. And then we get all beat up and scraped up and we say, we're not going to go again. I'm the kind of cliff jumper that will jump, I'll fall, I'll look back, see where it was that I needed to recalculate, get back up and go. One of my core values is relentless resiliency. Mm. And if you are going to be a fighter in life, in business, in whatever it is that you, you know, uh, you're in your fam- fight for family, whatever the thing is, you have to be resilient. Yeah. You have to be relentless in your resiliency because things will happen. We're talking about all this and, oh, yeah, knock this out and do this or whatever, whatever. You can plan all day long. If something happens, you have to be intentional in deciding to stand up and go again, climb back up and jump again. You have to be resilient in those actions because if you stop, if you quit, if you let those things get you, bog you down, make you believe that you can't get, up, get back up again or whatever, I, I, you, you have to be rooted in your purpose to know that this is all part of the plan. Mm-hmm. This is all part of the journey. Mm-hmm. You just have to get up and, and go again. Try again and do better. Mm-hmm. What is that lesson you were talking about? What is that lesson that you learned? Apply that next time. Mm-hmm. Go back and do, you know, the, all of these things, whether it's entrepreneurial or life, mm-hmm. you know, it's about being resilient. It's about, you know, that, fa- that famous, um, I, don't, I, I don't know if anybody's going to be, I'm, 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 a, I'm a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, share, show my age. Uh, by quoting Rocky Balboa. (laughs) But you know, that, that thing, you know, it's one of those things I even have it on my, on my website too. Um, and where you, you, my core values of relentless resiliency, it's not about how many times, um, you get knocked down. It's about how many times you get back up. And, you know, he goes through this whole thing. Y'all Google it. Y'all, y'all go on and, and look it out because this is a great, great thing. It's where you, t- you know, where Rocky's giving the speech to his son. Uh, I think it's like in Rocky Forest. And I should probably know better. Anyway, but where he's giving the speech um, and he's talking about, you know, not giving up. And he's talking about being relentless and understanding that the world's going to knock you down time and time and time again, no matter what. And that may be to your point whether it's as a child, whether it is as a grown up at work, whether it is in a marriage, whether it is in a relationship, whether it is, you know, self, you know, inflicted uh, wounds that, that we can, you know, self-talk, self-doubt, self, all of those things. Um, things will happen. Things will happen. The winds are going to come. That hard sun is going to come. The floods, the, you're going to get uprooted. All of those things we talked about. You have to be resilient enough to understand once you're rooted in purpose that you can persevere. 
through anything when you are rooted in purpose. That's, that's the key. When you are rooted in purpose, you can do anything. It gives you the answers. When you're talking about earlier about social injustice, when you're talking about the world, you know, uh, I've seen so many memes about the world being a dumpster fire. That is, you know, when you're feeling that way, when you are in that spot, when you have purpose, you can shake it off and understand, okay, let's reset. What can I do? There is always a solution, right? What can I do to move forward? How can I press forward? How can I push through? You know, understand, I don't care how many circumstances you've had. I've, I've had circumstances. 10 million other people have had circumstances as well. And, and some far worse. Some far worse. Some far better. Not as, not as, not as you know, not as harsh or critical or, or, or traumatic. But at the core of everything in your in your purpose and who you are, your ability to do the work, work through those things, talk through those things, be vulnerable enough to do the work to understand how to, to your point, elevate your state of self-awareness yeah. so that you can recognize when the creepy crawler Roy comes up, imposter syndrome, and wants to take me out, in, in, and, and I'm on camera. Uh, no, you know, <laughs> no, thank you. No, thank you. You know, you, you, you have to, you know, um, that self-awareness piece and being able to recognize that and step away from it and, and shifting and, and doing something different, you yeah. know, is key, is really, really key, uh, I think. But I, I love what you do and I love who you are and I love that you instill purpose in others because that truly is, you know, you don't not have to be a, an entrepreneur right now or even business minded for that sake or, or you know, wanting to go through or or uh, you know, entrepreneurial spirit or not, when you are rooted in purpose, anything is possible. You truly have the key to pressing your life forward and reaching your fullest potential, whether as a person, individual, or business, whatever you wanna, however you wanna break it down or what have you. Yeah. It's having that root and that core um, that really drives you forward. I think you have a tremendous gift and that your stepping out of fear and stepping into your own purpose by having this podcast, by sharing these gifts with others, by communicating and letting them know that there is a path and there is a way mm -hmm. to find, you know, their, their purpose is incredible because that's what the, that's, what's going to change the world. I always say, I call my community world changers. It's because when you live with purpose, you can change the world. I say, knowing what your purpose is one, knowing your purpose is one thing. Living your purpose is how you change the world. Two completely different things. Knowing and, and living, two completely, two completely different things. Absolutely. Two completely different things. And, and one starts with self-awareness. And it starts with self-awareness. You're absolutely right. And this is what I help my my uh my clients with you know what I, i'm gonna i'm gonna add a little piece I'm, I'm gonna take something from you add a little piece because i also work with them on uh, acknowledging triggers that yes. come up but you know what i'm gonna start having them name them so they can know um this is roy sneaking in through the back mm -hmm. door so mm -hmm. roy go, go somewhere and, and sit down because that is so important to um, have the ability to even recognize that trigger recognize that you've been triggered and Absolutely. then you know, uh, correctly um, identify it so you can know what it is. Because yeah. once you correctly identify it, then you can apply the... the recognize it. Yeah, yeah, you recognize it next time. When you feel that feeling sneaking up or whatever. It's, and, and I liken it to when I first you know, I started thinking about this, I was talking to my, my business bestie and we were having a conversation. I'll never forget. We were on a road trip. I was on my way uh, to, to see my husband's family in uh, New Mexico. And so it was a long trip. It was like a 12-hour drive to get over from, from where we're at. And uh, we were talking about, you know, challenges about, gosh, I have this, this feeling that I can't do it or I have self-doubt and da, da, da. she was explaining it and we were talking about these things. Um, mm -hmm. and it came to, to mind and I'm like, you know, when you have those little gnats that you can't necessarily see, but once you see it, you can get, you know, get rid of it and, you know, get it off of your face or whatever it is, but you, you think you saw it, but you, you're not sure or whatever, because it's not, you know, it's the visual, it's the ability to call it out and see what it is and be able to like tackle it and identify it versus that, 
I feel like something's bothering me or bugging me. I can't exactly whatever. And then when you get it, you can and make sure that you got it taken care of. <laughs> That's how it, how that the, how that thought process came to be because it was like how many times we had and then that kind of transitioned into you know naming this naming the spirit of whatever it is like the spirit of depression or the spirit of anxiety or the spirit of you know whatever those things are in your in your life that that you said like your triggers whatever they may they may be mm -hmm. naming them really helps you then recognize them the next time they come at you and therefore you don't let them get to you and i and it and i, I admit it took me a minute when it, it was started to happen to me in that moment where i started to have that self doubt like but and and can i just tell you how ridiculous this is like this is a person who's i'm I've got, I've got my clients, I've got my business, I have employees, yes. I have da, 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 that, that, no room nor space for thoughts like that. Right. There's, you know what I mean? It happens to everyone. Mm -hmm. Everyone, you know? No what level you at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But because of the self-awareness, because of elevating that state of awareness and being able to acknowledge and recognize Roy when he comes to pick on me, I was able to say, you hush, get outside and then get back to what I was doing, you know, in, in a matter of minutes. Whereas before, man, people can downward spiral for days, if not months, when they're not careful with that. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. those triggers can truly set you into yeah. deep states of whether it's depression or anxiety or self-loathing, mm -hmm. which is, ah, which that is something that we all have power over. Mm -hmm. You know, we really do. Um, but if you don't recognize it, well, you sit and wallow in it like a pig in mud. Yeah. It feels good. It feels good sometimes, right? And that's that's where when you identify and you are living with purpose, that you can al allow yourself to step out and recognize. Wait a minute, this is not who I am. This is this is not what I'm about. This is not what I purpose my whether it's my business or my life or my whatever with. Mm -hmm. I got to get out of this situation now. Yeah. And that may be going outside and breathing in fresh air for, you know. Doesn't have to be something super big. You know? okay, something as simple as, like you said, fresh air. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. To so like yeah. snap you snap you up out of. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. End. Absolutely. Or get up and walk away from whatever it is. Yeah. Or get your, you know, your your music that you, there's a certain song that lifts you up, you know. Yeah. Go listen to it. Go listen to it. Go drive around in the car if you can, or just like I said, go outside, walk, do whatever you need to do. But everyone has, you know, if, and if, even if it means you have to go uh, to the restroom and, you know, 10 deep breaths in, in the restroom while chaos is happening outside in, in the house or whatever, take that time to center and remember who you are, because that's really important. I, I think it's really important. That's something that's a practice that I, that, you know, I, like I said, when it happened to me, it was like a moment of, oh my gosh, I need to recognize this and then get out of it and, you know, push forward. So, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. You are amazing. Have you heard that yet today? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you are so amazing. And this conversation is definitely going to help someone else. And you know what? It helps me. This conversation has definitely helped me. So I know it's going to definitely help my audience, but in case it doesn't, just know it helped me for sure. <laughs> Thank you. And, Thank you. Uh, I pulled a lot from this conversation. Thank you for being so, so open and, and honest and transparent because, you know, open, honest, and transparency, like that's how my customers benefit from these conversations. So I just thank you for that. But before I let you go, please give us one book or audible recommendation because I'm addicted to audible. Um, what book or audible recommendation that you have that you either read or listened to that has inspired you? You know what? I, if, if I can, I actually, I actually have it right here if I, and I can show it to you so you can see the cover. Yeah. Um, this is so mastering your inner critic. Mm. So <laughs> I got a self-awareness coach. I need to so, <laughs> Susan Brady. Uh, this is amazing. This really does um, you know, we talk about that self-doubt and we talk about those things um, where we're still self-critical when we, we can't ask for help because we've got to do better. We've got to know better, whatever this, this is a really great book to help walk you through that process and help. And it's really, 
you know, entre entrepreneurial spirits, people who are still working their nine to five and who are having difficulty um, in their nine to five and it's and they would like to pursue um, advancement. It's how the best women leaders practice self-awareness. There you go. I, I, hadn't, I hadn't even seen that that was written over here to be perfectly honest. How they practice self-awareness to change what really matters. The, it, and, and a uh, beautiful, beautiful, wonderful uh, friend of mine uh, wrote the forward um, to this book as well, and um, which is a, just a bonus and a plus because she's incredible as, uh, just as an individual. But um, Susan Brady is the author. And so Mastering Your uh, Inner Critic and Seven Other High Hurdles to Advancement. It's really about accessing your highest self. And like I said, even though it's um, entrepreneurial based or not, uh, or I should say um, corporate based or like, you know, advancing for, for folks who are trying to do well and advance in their nine to fives or what have you, there are a ton of strategies in here mm -hmm. that just help you attain your higher self. And, you know, I, the, the idea of um, understanding who you truly are and how you talk to yourself and how you build yourself up and how you surround people who will pour into you and how you position yourself to um, whether it's to negotiate, whether it is to, um, you know, stand up for something that you believe in, whether it is for you, all of those things, there are strategies kind of that really help you um, through the process. Anyway, I, I, I think it's a really great book. And so I'm gonna have to check that, check that out. You guys check the show notes and click on audible recommendations because I'm going to put it down there. So definitely check it out. Um, and then last question, when describing the meaning of living your truth, complete this phrase. Let me know what your third word is when you hear these two words put together. Okay. Self-awareness, purpose, and oh, legacy. Ooh. I love that. I don't think no one has said legacy yet. No, I don't think no one has said legacy yet. I love that. When you identify your purpose, when you're self-aware, you can build legacies. You can build generational legacies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can think about the, your kids, whether if you're an auntie, your nieces and your nephews, your grandchildren. When you pour purpose and self-awareness at a young age into people, I, very quickly, can I just tell you very quickly? This is, so, this is so funny. So my nephew, okay, my nephew, he is uh, 17, ooh, he's gonna be 18 already. Uh, I'm, 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 let me see the, the math is right. What year are we in? Yes, he's 17. Okay. <laughs> um, he is a high functioning autistic young man uh, and he is in high school. He's a senior in high school and he is absolutely uh, amazing. He is, has the most beautiful heart beautiful kindness and because I, and I love this and I just I had this conversation with him last night uh my husband and I went out uh riding in the car for a little bit and we, we like to do that we're we're from that generation something so if you need to relax or whatever we don't Netflix and chill we ride and chill <laughs> get some good tunes on drive around the block several times go up and we're good <laughs> and so we were driving around and I and uh, my husband said hey if you you, you know you talk to to nephew uh, uh, today, and I said, no, I said, I should, I, I miss him a, a lot, let's, let's give him a, a call, and he happened to answer uh, my, my ma's phone, he lives, my, my mother is helping raise him, yeah. and um, we were going through, he was telling me about how I made A's, and I'm doing so well, and this, and whatever, he's going through the, the stuff, and at the very end, I said, I want you to know um, that I love you so much and I'm so proud of everything you do. And I'm so proud of, I was, you know, pouring into him or whatever. And at the end of the day, he goes, well, I know Dithi, I'm pretty awesome. <laughs> I'm like, okay then. I'm so glad everything that I've been teaching you and telling you the truth. <laughs> He's like, well, I know, I know, I, I'm, I'm awesome. And I love you too. Be careful, Bubba. He was like, <laughs> like, duh, Dithi, duh. Like, duh. Let me see if I don't know. Yeah. I'm great and kind and loving and fabulous and smart and you know <laughs> all of those things matter because I mean I think about him and his world and how you know we're very blessed in the, in the sense that he is a high functioning uh, autistic young man uh, whereas there are many many uh, autistic uh, young people who uh, are nonverbal or who have you know he has all of the you know the, the auditory things you know bug him and all this stuff but the point is 
pouring into him and seeing even in the most difficult of circumstances, even when you don't think that it's not going to be soaked up or even when you don't think that it's, you know, um, when you do that, that his legacy will be that he is confident in himself and that he has purpose and that he knows who he is. He's a kind, loving, smart young man with purpose. And that's why I say legacy. That's why I say legacy, because when you pour, when you find it for yourself and you pour it into others, that's legacy. Mm -hmm. That's ongoing, world-changing, powerful legacy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And thankfully for your nephew, he has a support team to, you know, let him know that and keep him in alignment because you pouring into him, you are a part of his support team. Which goes I on. am. You know, I am. And he's, he's got, he's got a fun group. You know, he's got his daddy, my mom, my mom, it's a nuclear family set up over there. My, my, my grandmother, who's 101 lives with them as well. I know it's, it's, it's an interesting setup, <laughs> but the fact that he is so resilient in that space, because there's a lot of things that happen, you know, grandma gets sick, you know, his grandma, my mom has a lot of stuff to do. There's a lot of things happening that goes on in the, in the, in the home. His daddy works. There's all sorts of things that could potentially be, you know, happening, but he's got a, a solid core team there. And that's the other thing too, when we're talking about individuals, you know, having solid, you know, your own in home, how you build and, and I'm, I'm kind of in community because I don't live in the house. Technically, obviously I'm an auntie, but, <laughs> but that's kind of, you know, parallel to having an outside community. Not only do you have to have it in the house, but you have to have it outside um, elsewhere to help pour in, you know? 100%, 100%, 100%, 100% agree. Thank you so much. This was amazing. Thank you I'm so much. So Thank you. I'm really and truly, I love these conversations. I love to talk about this. Uh, I'm so, so thankful and grateful for your invitation. Uh, this has, this has helped remind me of some of stuff that I need to be doing and, uh, and applying to my, to my own life and what I'm doing. So yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm so grateful. Thank you for the invitation. This really has been fun. This has been more than fun.